he's going to run out first here. And they're coming out in numerical order. Steve McDowell, wonderful player in the All Black Pack from the Auckland Club. And there he is, Hicker the happy hooker from Longataha, Hickory. He made his debut back in 1980. Jean-Pierre Garraway, the potato farmer from the holy city of Lourdes. French tight head prop. And this grand second rower who made his test debut for the All Blacks in the flower bomb test at Eden Park, Gary Wetton, the Auckland captain. Gary Wetton, uh, magnificent line-out experiment. And now the Irish captain, Donald Lenahan. Certainly this ground is buzzing, Gary Pearce. It certainly is. It's, we're starting to really pack it in now. And all this tremendous to see these, these uh, players from all over the world running out here. Next out is Ian Paxton, the British Lion. Normally a number eight or second rower. And he's on the side of the scrum this afternoon. Gary Lambert from Marietta in Georgia, wearing the number seven jersey for the world. He's right. played out here at Concord uh, in the Sydney Sevens. And now the All Black skipper. What an awesome presence he is. Wayne Shelford from North Harbour. I think Gary Lambert's going to remember today. He's playing in a tremendous pack. He's got a Scottish back rower and, and uh, number eight with him. He's going to really tuck in behind him. Fabio Gomez. Puma's halfback. He first fought the eye in the 86 Sydney Sevens, coming out with the Puma's seven-a-side team. Hugo Porter, 37 years of age. He's the captain of this star-studded lineup. Very good crowd here at Concord. And now the fighter pilot from Leicester, Rory Underwood. One of the quickest men in international rugby. That's Michael Kiernan, the former Irish 200 metres sprint champion. Another British Lion. And he's been a mainstay in a very slick Irish back line in recent seasons. Plenty of pace there, Gary, in the backs. There certainly is, but I think you'll find that the uh, would have prepared them this week to be really play a conservative game early on and really burst in depth. So you can see that pace really coming on. 13 was John Schuster from Wellington and now Tom Mitchell. Well, he played at Eaton Park in that pulsating World Cup quarter-final against France. And last man out, number 15, Mark Wyatt. Gordon, Mark also played in the sevens. Um, he's been playing the sevens for a few years, so he's got a good turn of pace. So the World 15, five New Zealand All Blacks, two Irishmen, two Pumas, one each from Scotland, Fiji, Canada, England, United States and France. Porter is the captain and two national skippers in the forwards, Wayne Shelford and Donald Lenahan. As we look towards the Parramatta Road end, in splendid condition. And the very appropriate referee, Gary Pearce, for this contest, all the way from Wales, Mr Clive Norling, and he was in charge of that quarter-final between France and Fiji last year in the World Cup. So the Rico Challenge, the bicentennial test match underway, and Ugo Porter, the oldest man on the field, has the first touch, and we're 30 metres out from the World 15 goal line. Well, the first bit of physical contact here will be very important for both sides. One side, the side that's going to get on top today is the one that has to do it right from the first minute. Cutler with a one-handed to Far Jones, loose ball for him to Arthura. Clever little kick through for his former countryman, Tom Mitchell. Wrapped up by the Australian forwards, just outside the 22. Porter again with a searching kick up the touchline. And it's a big moment for this man, Bob Dwyer, deposed in 1983 and now back in the driver's seat. Donald Linehan, the Irish captain, he made his debut against Australia in 81 at Lansdowne Road. Brian Smith, James Grant, wrapped up well, Lambert the tackler, Mark Wyatt, just outside the 22. Pretty important there, Australia tried to make the advantage line, but one from Australia's point of view was, was how fast that Jeff Miller got to the breakdown. And that's really going to be the difference between these two sides. 
There's the great BJ Lahore and the World 15 manager from Wales, Clive Rollins. Saw a good jump by Wetton and a driving tackle by Steve Tyneman. Go on, wait. Hold up, get set, shoulders at no Go. Shoulders have to be above the level of the hips. Time meant to Far Jones. Here comes Williams with pace. Look at him go. He couldn't pick it up. The try was there. Some neat work there by Timeman and Far Jones. They've been doing it for a few years now. They've got a tremendous understanding. And now it's Fabio Gomez. Feeding for the World 15. Australia wrapping up Shawford on the short side. And looking for the put in. And they'll get it too. Pretty important here, this world side, if they want to be part of this game, they've really got to get that pack together. You'll see now that the All Blacks in the pack will really get together and try and get the other players to go with them. Because if you can't win your set plays in these games, then you're just not in the game. Australian scrum going for a secondary shove. Very close point of it. He's over the goal line. Couldn't get it down. Another five metre scrum. Wayne Shelford, the tackler. Advantage of a of a scrum going forward here. He'll heaps of weight behind there. Look at Simon, really, he was a big game for Simon today. And he's really put it over there, but just rolled onto his back. Far Jones to Smith. He's the cutout to Leeds, he couldn't hold on. Grant to Arthura, first try. Well, there was a, a suspicion of a knock forward. Not so, says the referee. Four minutes gone. We see here the ball, good scrum, good scrum, the ball going backwards on that ball. The ball comes out and they really create the pressure situation midfield. Ball goes behind leads, very good pick up by, by James Grant. And here we are, the two, two XVGs and away they go and the Thura just had too much pace. So an early blow for the World 15 and some excellent work from the Australian forwards. Brian Smith adds the extras and a six-point advantage for Australia. Nearly five minutes gone in the first half. What's important here is the scrum was the one that made that try, but also very quick work, that quick second phase play. Again, one of the things that Bob Dewey will be trying to develop and just create that overlap. Porter with the kickoff, wet and coming through. Very important here that we see that the world side's got to really get itself together, get its scrum right before it can really do anything else. Very hard, players from all over the world come together only for one week, but they really have to do it if they're going to make a game of it. Jeff Miller at the back, Gomez to Porter. Drop goal attempt, it's a beauty! Oh yes! 45 metres out! The maestro! Well, Australia's seen that happen too many times in the past. You just can't give him half an inch. You see here the pressure comes through. Gomez, quick pass. You give him half a yard and bang, he's got it. Six points to three. Wayne Shelford. Inside he's 22. Midway 22 and halfway. Crawley at the front, Hicker Reed knocked on. <laughs> Smith, testing ball from Wyatt. Cook coming through, good tackle, no mark. And the world did well to come away, look at Underwood. Good tackle by Smith, Gomez to Porter. Hicker reads there with Lenahan. 
Referee playing advantage for Australia. Smith. Grant kicking for Williams. Mitchell versus Williams. Yes, what a little bit of play here. We saw the world side really try to break out from their own 22. I think that a way that they're going to try and play the game if they get hold of the ball today. But Australia had an overlap there. It's a pity the ball was kicked because I think in the ball in the hand, Australia could have gone over the corner. Referee calling for the half metre tunnel. No jumping across the tunnel either. Cutler easily. Loose ball though for Far Jones. Lenahan at the front of the line out. Hesitation. Australia through Koinerman. Referee playing advantage. And he'll bring it back for the knock forward by the world. I think there was a, a, a communication problem in, between Argentina and, uh, and New Zealand there. I think Schuster didn't really know he was going to get the ball. Hugo's got to try and play the ball, ball down the other end of the field before they get real advantage. Steve McDowell on the far side. Leeds has gone right. Far Jones, three on two. Williams, pass was knocked ahead. Referee plays advantage. Counter-attack Australia. Arthura coming through. Mitchell. 22. John Schuster, the former Western Samoan from Wellington now. All black to Japan. Six points to three, Australia with a converted try to one penalty goal. The Australians getting some good drive and now a rolling ball over the 22. Far Jones sniping, looking for Tyneman. The world in trouble, Miller's there. Over anxious play there from the forwards. There was very good tight work early on by Australia, really keeping the ball hidden. The world really didn't know where the ball was going. Far Jones broke out. But then the world are doing too much watching. Players have to go in and take players out. It's still only five metres out from the world's goal line. Here it comes for Smith. James Grant, run around. Again, the pass intercepted, a try goes begging. Arthur is still going. And we'll come back now, I think, for the knock forward. Well, Mr. Norling uh, gave Australia a penalty try against Argentina back in 1983, I think it was, for a deliberate knock forward when it occurred outside the 22. So he's a man who has been rather controversial in his time. Clive spends his life pretty controversial I think it tends to be the limelight a fair bit here they go short side Far Jones to Arthur the world was waiting Smith Smith still going he's there under the posts Miss tackled by the world inside backs the strength of Brian Smith. Well, he'd be pretty happy about that. See here's some very good lead up on the blind side, which was which really did exert the pressure to play him across to this side. Good worker by Athura here, it came right in to consolidate the ball here. Bang straight back to his forwards. Good drive forward here, committed the world across to one side. Comes across, Smith does a dummy, dummy, Porter, tremendous palm off on Porter, and too much pace for Gomez under the post. The conversion from in front was successful, but here it is again. Far Jones, the Australian captain, 
and the strength and power of Brian Smith, the new Australian 5'8". Well, Brian Smith, during the off-season, a lot of work on his sprinting, and uh, over 20 metres, he's almost as quick as anyone in the team. BJ Lahore, not too happy with proceedings at the moment. Two converted tries to the Australians to Porter's field goal. It's an option uh, for the Australians in that situation. They can have another kick, a line out on halfway or a scrum. But uh, most times it's the scrum. Garraway opposed to Peter Kay, 34 year old against the 24 year old. The potato farmer from Lourdes was sent off by Clive Norling and Paris in 1984 for gouging. Smith to Leeds in the line and Williams chasing. He's certainly been able to stretch his legs in the first half. It's interesting. Australia's been able to keep the ball away from this, this world forward pack. And that's really been the secret of territory and the dominance of the game so far. The world pack would want to keep the ball close, get that, that All Blacks dis disciplines come back into the game, and that's the only way they're going to be able to, be able to, be able to force into this game. Gary Wenton with a one-hander. Gomez under pressure. Knock on Australia. Australia leading by 12 points to three. 13 and a half minutes gone, first half. Australian pack's very low here. I'm pretty impressed with this front row, with the power and strength of Lawton in the centre, but Kay's playing extremely well. He's keeping his body height down and keeping his back straight. Porter. Pass was forward, and the referee saw it too. From behind the goal line. Again, good pressure from the Australian back row. Again, because the pack stayed low. Australian pack staying low, both on their own ball and the opposition ball. Looks like they've done a lot of good work, and as I said before, they've really looked back and taken the best parts of the game in the last four or five years. The Australian scrummaged against the Gordon first grade pack during the week. Grant Nesbitt's old club. Gomez paddling the ball back, but it was still in the scrum. He was ruled offside. We we'll see here as the ball comes to put around. In the scrum like that. I think he tried three times, Gomez, actually. I think it was a, it's a three times enough. He better give him the penalty. So the world at the moment showing signs of, of lack of cohesion which I suppose is to be expected, Gary. They've only had three training sessions together. That's true, but the answer really lies with this, these All Blacks that are in the pack. They've got to get together, start to win some good straight ball, and then you'll see the good players, at Gomez and Porter, play a more relaxed game. Brian Smith right on target. 100% record so far. Three out of three. Two conversions and one penalty. It's the under pressure that you get the Argentinians. They really do find problems. You can see here they're looking for soft options left, right, all over the place but if you, they're going forward they're very very good players they've got to be able to get that ball to straight runners like Schuster and uh, and, the, and the other talented players in the back line here's Hickorid like a rampaging bull Gomez now Shelford good ball for the World 15 backs quick hands to Wyatt's Mitchell! Tommy couldn't hold on. Advantage here for the Australians. Ian Williams with a bit of space. He's too quick for Shelford. 
Schuster now. Good tackle. Cook is there. Miller too. Good support from the Australian. Smith. Here they go again. Look at the overlap. James Gratz. Far Jones. Well caught. Gary Lambert. The Australians haven't made any ground. McIntyre, the tight head prop. Ran into Shelford. So that's very good defence from the World 15. Well, it had to be good defence because Australia were running across field for most of it. It was only really, someone should have really decided to go up the middle to commit them and then move it wide. Can't play too much going sideways. Well, they lost it, Far Jones, clever pass. He's calling for it again. Here it comes. Smith. Three on two. Leeds and Arthura. Mitchell's there. Good tackle. Leeds and Wyatt. The two fullbacks. Arthura, very, uh, very talented. He did it a few times in the sevens where he runs towards the sideline and just kicks it on the outside of his right foot and straightens the play up. Great skills. Yes, it's the old banana kick. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Australian forwards feeling pretty confident in the early stages. Brian Smith to Leeds. And some obstruction there by the Australians in the backs. Shepherding, says the referee. Mr. Clive Norling wearing a microphone for us this afternoon explaining his decisions and clearly there the Australians obstructing in midfield well the, the whole objective there was to try and get the world centers to stand still They've been looking both ways sending somebody through the middle but that, it'll develop as the game goes on they'll be able to do it without the shepherd Gary Wetton good two-handed catch Lambert running into Smith Gomez to Porter Schuster's outside now it's Kin and cut out Underwood Australians getting to that breakdown very quickly, but not controlling that time. Again, Jeff Miller getting there. What a terrific breakaway. Tremendous example he sets for every, every young breakaway to get there right to the breakdown on his knees, win it, pop it up. But unfortunately, he just knocked right. it on then. Porter to Schuster. Underwood almost slicing through. And the world again not holding on at a crucial stage, but Underwood showing how dangerous he can be. Yes, Jeff Miller very much in the mould of uh, Chris Roach, as we see a nice work here from Hugo Porter. And Underwood, as he comes through here, look, really determined look on his face. He bursts Miller's tackle, but looking, looking too much around and not only out onto the ball. Smith with a low torpedo. Midway 22 and halfway. Brian Smith's added a very, very solid uh, position to the Australian back line. Not only has he got the ability to chip over the top and find touch, but also, he's, he, as we saw before, when he went through Porter to score the try, he's very, very strong and a great play for the back rowers to run off. That's the 10 metre line, World 15 territory. Time and at the back to Cutler, who was sweeping. He's going to have trouble getting that one back though. Rucks and Mall's fairly even so far. The World 15 leading in the lineouts 5 to 3. Porter. Schuster took it well. Wrapped up by Smith. Arthur is in there to Tyneman. Shelford the tackler. That was the Cumberland throw. Porter now to Wyatt. Underwood's outside. And a very tidy kick there by Mark Wyatt. The Canadian fullback. Just beating Underwood into touch. One of the rare times the world's got down into the, into the Australian 22. Here it'll be a real big call from the, from the New Zealand players in the pack to get this ball going forward. Give Schuster some opportunities to get punch up midfield. Far Jones to Smith. 
hooking that one back over his shoulder. But 18 metres out, and the World 15 now with a chance to press home the advantage. Gary Lambert two-handed to Shelford. Look at him go. Awesome. Gomez to Porta. Schuster. He was watching the opponent. Australia counter-attack. And that's a great kick by Michael Kick over the halfway line. Well, the pretty hungry side is Australian side. The slightest loose ball and they're onto it and really getting advantage. So the ball comes in here. Shelford only knows one way. Here we go. The Maori sidestep straight over the top. <laughs> Every powers through the rest of the pack over. World side looks great here. Look, tremendous quick hands, but Schuster just took his eyes off at the wrong time. But look how hungry the Australian team is. Smith to Cook. Straightening up well. Brian Smith, good hands. Leeds and Williams. Williams and Wyatt. Good tackle. Round the boot lace. Very experienced play by White there. The guy who plays from Canada doesn't get that much large in, in international rugby, but just really came up well. Good. Came up right onto, onto Williams there. Didn't give him an inch. Again, the 10 metre line. Gary Wetton. Gomez staying in play, and I think he might have given Australia possession. Probably be, would have been better advised there to run into touch. But no, the world look as though they might come away with it. So it's been an interesting uh, 23 minutes so far. Australia leading by 15 to 3. The world 15 starting to settle down. But Australia getting plenty of possession. They've lost a lot of ground. Indecision. Leads. Wild pass to Far Jones. Australia there trying to do too much behind the advantage line. Most players were flat footed. They'll have to be bursting onto the ball to be able to get those moves right. Hyman got a hand, so did Cutler. Cook. Grant. Grant is a very fast man to Arthura. Tackle was late. Scrum just a few metres out. Again, Arthura is showing this, this tremendous little skill he's got. Watch as the ball comes out to Arthura. Slide overlap, gets the ball, and just rests it on the edge of his foot. Bang, straightens the play up. Smith to Cook. To Smith again, try number two if he can get there. Leeds! No, the referee says no. Pass was forward. Porter plays on quickly. Arthur is the only man back there for Australia. Underwood coming through with Gomez. And the safety of the touchline, his only option. I think, a third, I think Australian forwards were pretty happy with that kick. There's a long way to run back for it. Well, apparently uh, it wasn't a forward pass. It wasn't grounded correctly. Bounce ball. Ian Paxton, Spring Hill, 35 metres out from the Australian goal line. The world losing a few metres. Oh, a punch throw. And Gomez into touch. Well, you can see, you can see. You can see there an Australian player in there just trying to stop holding that ball from coming out. And, uh, the option was taken to uh, tell him about to do it again. Arthur a herring after this one. Mitchell there. So is Lambert. Indecision. With Shelford. Arthur the tackler. 
Porter to Kiernan to Wyatt. Leads on his 22. Nick Far Jones calling for it on this side. And that's a big game. Going inside the 22. Fabio Gomez. Well, 26 minutes gone. First half. Australia leading by 15 to 3. Well, it's okay these kicks downfield, but it's pretty important that uh, your kicks are only as good as your chases. It was really important to get up there and, and really put pressure on those kicks that were taken by both sides. So. Time in at the back. Cook, Grant, Leeds, Leeds, Grant, Williams. Try number three for Australia. Well, Ian Williams picking up where he left off last week against Queensland, a quartet of tries. And some very nice work there by the Australian midfield. You see some very good, very good line-up play here. The ball gets out. It moves across a, a, a pre-rehearsed move. Leeds hits the ball line like he did the last time when he dropped, he unfortunately dropped it, but great backing up. And you just won't catch Williams in those situations. Here comes the kick. Smith retains his perfect record. And Australia moving into the 20s. And we've had 27 minutes of play so far. The guy that really made that move, I think, was, was James Grant, the way he really did, did get around on that loop. But he, he took a punishing tackle by, by Mitchell. As you see, he's come through here, and he really burst onto the ball. But watch Mitchell hit him. Jeez. I think he's got sore ribs from that. Nick Far Jones has just dispensed with a, a strap from his knee. But uh, James Grant has certainly been a revelation this season for New South Wales and now Australia. Jeff Miller into the thick of the World 15 forwards. Far Jones has it to Tyneman. Straight into Porter. Hard man to put down. Shelford's there. And no way that one will come out. Shelford and Tyneman almost having a tete a tete good open side ball for Grant Keenan inside this is Cook to Arthur there's that little kick again Smith to Miller Tatla stolen by Wayne Shelford he was about the only man there, too, for the World 15. Smith, back to Far Jones. Good hands here from the Australians in support. Far Jones to Smith. I think he was uh, aiming for the goalpost there, but certainly the, the attack and the sustained pressure is coming from the Australians at the moment. Well, started off with Shelford really getting in there, but they got the ball off him. But good looping here by the Australian team. It's just a pity they just took the soft option on that kick. So this is a little earlier, and James Grant, the Grant inside pass to Cook. Good backing up. Thura gets it, takes the play up, tries his little kick again. Possibly should have looked for the inside pass. But Australia here, some good hands, good teamwork. Miller again, always there. Look at Cuts, he's in there. Oh, Skylab, he's been high up in the air, but here he is, Shelford gets in there and drives it forward. The Rico challenge between Australia and the World 15. It's been all Australia as Poitavan goes through the forwards. Lawton supports. Here it is again for Far Jones. Smith, Cook, Smith, Grant. Lost ahead. Let's see what the world can do. Hickory! Gomez. It's a chance for Kiernan. Tommy Mitchell. Arthur in the tackler. Back to Gomez. Desperate defence. A knock on by Arthur. 
and Hika, the happy hooker from Nogataha, wasn't too friendly that time, but just gives him a pat on the back of the head. He certainly landed it off at a bit of a hit for a thura. Well, I thought Hika was going to start and, and finish that great try we saw at Ballymore in 1980. And he knows one way, straight up the middle. The tremendous, yeah, great pick up by Gomez, again running straight, but then starts to drift a little bit too far across field, which squeezes his outside backs. Some good running by Mitchell here. Again, very strong runner. Pops the ball back, heaps of world players around as the Australian just really tried to hold on. But here we see Hickory, he says, I've got to run all this way. I've got to be part of it. Look out, Arthura. Bang. Whoa. No big pardons. Hickory, now 30 years of age, plays with the Wellington after moving from the Bay of Plenty. Schuster to Mitchell. He's through. Arthura bounced off. 15 metres out. The world looking for their first try. But they haven't controlled. Shelford. They're very close. McDowell. 10 metres out. John Schuster. Can't get round Cook. Lambert to Reed. Hicker Reed. Three metres out. Australia offside. There's a penalty. Shelford plays on. Can he get there? Gomez. Smuggling it back. Porter in trouble. Taken by Frawley. It's a bit like hot popcorn at the moment. Desperate defence from the Australians. Some tremendous defence by Australia there. That every one of those world players were really pushing hard onto the ball. So nearly just that last tackle, really decisive last tackle stopped them. Great straight runner, Schuster. Really straight the play up here. Some good backing up. Great Paxton skills. To Lambert, to Hicka Reed, and Jeff Miller there, <laughs> and Far Jones. 21 points to three. Shelford to pick up the crumbs. Ran into Lenahan. He's going backwards. Got away from Cutler. <laughs> straight into Jeff Miller. Sets up beautiful ball for Porter. He's taken by Smith to Mitchell. Kiernan's outside, and so too is Underwood. Wyatt, the fullback, well deserved try. And Mark Wyatt, playing for the World 15, has registered the first touchdown in this bicentennial test match for his side. Well, Shelford, he only knows one way. What an answer when you've lost a bit of ball. He's gone straight forward, committed the, the Australian pack. The ball comes back, running onto it. Some very good work by Mitchell, and can't he put the pace on? A little bit of looping ball, which opens the play up. Good loop by Wyatt, and over for a great try. And won't there be some cheers in the Valhallians Rugby Club in British Columbia? So about eight minutes before half-time. 21-7. Can Porter make it 21-9? No. It's a great lesson in that try there. I think all the world players have to take note that they can just get someone to run straight. As you can see here, tremendous power by, by Shelford. And then just run straight and back up. Porter's getting it right there. But again, Mitchell really knees up and puts the power in, commits the Australian team to midfield. A real Fiji pass that one. It certainly was. <laughs> So some newfound confidence for the World 15. And that's a hefty kick from John Schuster. His brother David plays for Northern Suburbs here in the Sydney Premiership. He went to watch him in action yesterday at North Sydney Oval number two. Cutler. Smith to Cook again. Looking inside for Smith. He lost it. <laughs> Trying to roll it. McDowell to Hicker Reed. Again, some elbows and 
swinging fists. All pretty harmless. Williams back there. And leads. And he has replied with interest. Back where they started. World side's starting to look a little bit more hungry now. They're just starting to get a little bit of ball around the edges. Australia's fallen back into the into a, uh, an easy position. I think they've just got to try a bit harder to consolidate their own ball. Here we go. Went and went high. Schuster at inside centre. Now it's wide again with Mitchell outside. Go Tommy! Well, wasn't it great to see the two Fijians in confrontation? Arthur, the tackler, and Mitchell, the attacker. Well, some very good slide defence by the Australian team then. They had the extra man in, but they all slid across onto the man coming across, which gave Athura enough, enough, enough ground to be able to, uh, to take Mitchell into touch. Far Jones. Frawley supports. The Australians controlling this one. Here it comes. And another big kick from Andrew Leeds. Well, you could hear Hicker Reed saying pressure, pressure, but uh, there really wasn't much there. Not one of the world players went through to try and put pressure on Leeds. And look what you get. You're over halfway. Yes, well, some good work there by Damien Frawley, Sydney University, and former brothers, second rower. Good pass from Gomez. Kiernan, Wyatt running hard and straight. Linking up now with Lambert. Overhead pass for Wetton, it has to be another one. Oh, great try to Hicker Reed. Concord Oval has erupted. The crowd to their feet with that one. And Hickory has scored the world's second try. Then it all started. What champagne rugby. The reverse pass by Gomez. Real classical stuff. Full back in. He straightens the play up beautifully. And what great backing up from the inside from Lambert. The ball goes right over across to Wetton. Then punching forward again. And Hickory, was he hungry for the line? And straight under the post. A tremendous try. Really showed the skills that rugby can give. Porter makes no mistake from in front. And the crowd still applauding that last try. It was a beauty. And Hicker the Reed. Well, we remember that try he scored at Ballymore in 1980 in his debut series. He then broke his leg in Canberra, missed the third test. But that certainly was reminiscent the way they swept the ball up the field. The only problem in 1980, uh, Hickory didn't score under the post, it was just beside. 21 points to 13. The world bouncing back brilliantly here in this first half. Three minutes remaining, first half. Australia tending to go off the boil over the last 10 minutes. Well, prior to that, Australia was sliding across very well onto that extra man, but then it, just the straight running, a different angle, different pace by White, really split Australia. Ball, ball. Bring it in, buddy. Bring it in. Far Jones to Smith. To Cook. Australia counter through Leeds. Not a good kick. White couldn't handle. But White has shown a clean pair of heels on a couple of occasions. He's no slouch in the pace department. Here goes Hickory again. Ball back like an orange pip to Lambert. Gomez through his legs. How do you like that? Mitchell. Keenan clears to Schuster to Porter. Wyatt. Australia threw in numbers. And we're about 28 metres out from the World 15 goal line. Australia in the lead by 21 to 13. Well, there'll be some new chapters written in rugby books after a couple of passes that Gomez has given us this afternoon. We must play for the Globetrotters, part of the Globetrotters in the off-season. Cutler at the back, but not in straight. Oh, 
So the world would love to score another try as we approach half time. Shelford working short. Not controlling. And the pass thrown forward. Well, Shelford was expecting his all black pack right up behind him there, and I don't think uh, the world had broken, broken fast enough. Here comes Williams again. Beautifully taken by Underwood. Pass was well forward. And I think they might have got away with it. Schuster, brilliant stepping and running from him. Look at Mitchell go. Mitchell! James Grant there. Australia in trouble. It's a try to Keenan. Started by John Schuster from inside his own 22. Well, you can never rest here. Good straight running here. Schuster straight up the middle. Bit of a mistake by Australia back in the other 22. But watch Tom Mitchell really put the strides in here. Comes between the two Australian players. Through it just gets to it. But again, the pressure by Mitchell. And look at the swapping of the world players as they all come around. Third got there, but can it over. And again, Hugo Porter adds the extras, so what a contest we have here at Concord. Two points the difference after Australia had gone away to a massive lead in the first half. And there's the pass from Underwood, and that looked to uh, have gone forward. That would have done Joe Namath proud, I think, in the, in the NFL. But uh, I think here we see Schuster, doesn't really matter, play the whistle. Up he goes, up the middle, good step. Only, as I said, a great straight runner. Not many options, he puts the ball through and watch Mitchell come between Grant and Athura. But again, the hungriness by these world players. Bang Schuster finishes off, starts it. Welcome back to our New Zealand viewers as the second half about to take place. 21 points to 19. And what a second half in prospect we have here at Concord Oval. Brian Smith allowing the ball to go over the dead ball line. But uh, we had some very interesting team talks, uh, which we were able to, to hone in on, Gary Pearce, in that first half. Perhaps you might like to summarise for New Zealand viewers. Well, in terms of uh, Lahore really got in there and he really put, put the law down that you really had to knock the Australian team down, be able to get the ball and drive it forward, which is nothing new, but it's really the players have to, have to adopt themselves to that particular discipline to, get, to really come forward and beat Australia in this game. But well, it's important, as in most games, it's the first five minutes and the, and the last five minutes of a half where the points are really won and where the game's won. And it was that last five minutes in the first half that the world really came back. So that's the 10 metre line, Australian Territory. Mr Norling calling for a clear tunnel. Hickory. He ran into Far Jones. And a punch throw on there by number one, Steve McDowell. The Australian player coming through, Damien Frawley, spoiling that ball from the halfback. Schuster's chasing. Tester here for Leeds. He couldn't take it. The Australians again under pressure here. Ten metres out. And a hurried reply from Leeds back up towards halfway, a good one. Well, there's certainly some snow on that one. That's the old Gary Owen, the ball went right up and Leeds thought, well, when is this going to come down? But what it did, he had about four or five world players around him, so it was a very good kick from Porter. So 40 points in the first 40 minutes. After Australia had led 21-3, Donald Lenahan at the front of the line-out. Porter field goal. This could put them in the lead. Look at it go. What a kick. His second pot. 40 metres out from goal. Shades of Buenos Aires last year as far as the Australians are concerned. This boat is fantastic. For years and years you see this tremendous field goal. What really it was made by Lenahan's tremendous jump at the front of the line out, which gave Porter all that, that time to kick it. But what a tremendous player. So the Australians find themselves behind now for the first time in this match. Is it 
world 15 has scored the last 19 points here's Williams with Grant outside Williams couldn't hold on good tackle by Schuster well, that was a different try scoring opportunity going astray there for Australia well there was enough goal jumpers around to really keep the ball alive there I don't think we really had to take that take them on that part Wayne Shelford and Miller expertly setting the ball up Tyneman coming through on Porter and that's very good refereeing by Clive Norling ball coming off knees and not hands Good degree of understanding creeping coming in from the world side here Porter was in a very close position there but he took it took it forward slipped it back allowed the well players to get behind and then allowed his other players the time to be able to relieve relieve that pressure big jump by Ian Paxton and it looks as though the world 15 haven't allowed the tunnel that time a free kick so you can't have a direct shot at goal but you can pass it and Smith will attempt a pot. It looks fairly straight. Oh, it's raining field goals here at Concord. The lead bounces back Australia's way by two. And we've had four and a half minutes second half. There's the 45 metre line. It's a fair way out. And it was always going to be there. Porter's kick is deep to Smith. He's had five successful shots at goal. And Shelford. First man there, Simon Poitavin. Pile driving his opponent into touch. So that was pretty intelligent play by Shelford. He was standing out and he jumped in the air and jumped into the field to play. Keep the ball alive. Cutler to Far Jones. To Smith. Australia leading in the lineouts now by 11 to 10. The important part here is Australia's got to get some good quality ball. It's not the amount that they're going to get, it's got to be good quality to be able to turn these, these especially the New Zealanders, get them to turn back. Because as they're running onto the ball, they're getting people becoming more a more threat in the game as they go. Ian Paxton, back to McDowell. No halfback. Shelford goes in for Porter. And he drills that ball across field into touch. Turning the Australians round. Well, Hugo can... Porter began his international career when his opposite number, Brian Smith, was still in nappies at Montevideo in 1971. This is his 18th season in a row of international rugby. Schuster. Wyatt's come in too. Schuster straightening up. He really turned on the gas that time. Gary Witten's almost over. Australia in trouble on the right. Porter to Mitchell. He ran into Peter Kay. Now it's Shelford. Low driving play from him. The world putting it right on the Australian pack now. Well, what's interesting here is that as the world start to straighten their play up, they're starting to get more blokes to the breakdown. The place where Australia was raining in the first half, but now the pressure's really been put on the Australian back row. Mistake from Gomez. They certainly didn't need that. The Australians really feeling the pinch at the moment. And poor old Fabio. What's important about the Australian game plan is they must win good quality second phase per ball. In other words, where the ball looks tackled and the players picked up from the tackle position, they've got to win more of that, drive it forward, and give room for their backs. But right now, they're just not getting there in time. Well, Andrew Leeds has produced some telling punt kicks for touch this afternoon. Taking a lot of heat off his teammates. 24-22, Australia in the lead. Eight minutes gone, second half. It's 
30 metres out. I think what's really telling too here is that the amount of running the ball's going back and forth. Clive Norling, the referee, is starting to uh, feel the puff. I haven't <laughs> early on he did a lot of talking, but now I have too much of, I don't need too much of him now. So they're working a move here from a free kick. Picker Reed. Back to Gary and Ian Paxton. Ball coming out for Gomez. Still going. Through the tackle of his opposite number. Inside the Australian 22. Garraway at the back of their small. Picker Reed number two. McDowell one. And it's Wetton. Gary Wetton to the line. Leeds. Won't stop him. Yes, he does. Great tackle. Try saving tackle by Andrew Leeds. And how he managed to get Gary Wetton down, I'll never know. Gary Wetton incredibly strong for a second row. Look at the power, but intelligently just pulls it back. And there's enough, enough world players there, but uh, somehow the ball got to tie it up. The world with a chance to land a psychological blow here. Ten minutes gone, second half, Australia leading 24-22. Wayne Shelford, quick hands, Arthur was there, and Mitchell. And a little knock on there by Arthur. Very important for this Australian team to really change their defence patterns to become offensive. In other words, go forward to do the tackles. They're spending too much time watching the world players do their tricks, do their dummies. So just two field goals in the second half. Good clearance from Gomez. Back to Kiernan. Shelford's there. Lena, Lenahan picks up. Australia's defence in close is good this time. Porter. Shows the ball. Lambert bowled over by Tyneman and Miller. Australia doing all the defending at the moment. The World 15 unrelenting, but they've lost it. Arthura. Arthur is away from Mitchell, a lovely body swerve. No one with him. And apparently he put a foot in touch midway 22 and halfway when he went for that swerve. Let's very watch it. Very adventurous here. Nix gets to Arthur and what a great little sidestep around the edge, but just, just put enough pressure on him to put his foot into touch. Schuster, the cover defender. Well, there's been a lot of ebb and flow about this game so far. It's been played in excellent spirit. Tynament to Far Jones. Good line here for Australia. And Smith looking for the territory and the bounce. He gets it. 50 metre gain there by Brian Smith. The Australian forwards are smiling again. Well, pretty important there. They won a good ball. Smith's done the right thing, got Australia down there. But right now, the only way is to go straight. Commit that world side to, 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 to the pressure points on the field and then move it wide. <laughs> Just 18 metres out from the World 15 goal line. 12 minutes gone in the second half. Gomez wrapped up. Damien Frawley, the tackler. Big drive from the Aussie forwards. Shelford got it back. And Hicker Reed again to Wetton. Underwood wanted the ball. Pass was forward to Leeds. He knocked on. Gomez. The referee's playing advantage. Australian forward standing off. Kiernan. Chance here for the world. Wyatt from fullback stepping beautifully. Schuster to Hicker Reed. Oh, look at the support here. Gary Lambert. Inside is Paxton. Lovely hands from Shelford. It has to be to Gomez. Try of the game. How about that? Champagne rugby. Absolutely tremendous rugby. Every player, I think just about every player must have touched the ball. You see here driving play, driving play by Australia. 
but bang, out, out of Shelford got the ball out, then across to Higarino. Look at the straight run. Look at the pace of this second rower. Gary Wenton, a good support play. Everybody in depth. Good hard hit tackles through the legs. The ball pops out again. Gomez has a go again. He flips the ball between his, between his legs again, which the crowd loved. And he moves his way back to, to take the ball across. Good moving the ball wide across field. And isn't this Wyatt had a big game? He's always running straight, different angle, different pace. Really good fullbacks disciplines. He read again, and he's in it again, again back to Shelford. And players to burn. They're really enjoying themselves. Again, Shelford again. And Gomez over. What a tremendous try. So the world scoring their fourth try coming in the 14th minute of the second half. And the celebration match bubbling over at the moment. Porter's kick is a beauty. 28 points to 24. 52 in the game so far. 15 Look points here, you can see the, the perfect ruck there. The players cleaning out other players. As the ball moves across. Here he comes, a fullback, different angle, bang, hits it hard. Off the right foot, really strives for Jeff Miller, always there, always dealing with a loose ball, but great backing up. Hicker Reed, here come the All Blacks again, across to, 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 to Gary Lambert. Over the top again, Shelford again, Gomez backing up. Tremendous rugby skills. So we've had the kickoff for the resumption. And the line out on the 10 metre line. Far Jones with good ball to Smith. Gets away from Lambert. Mitchell went without it. Point of it. James Grant. Well, the padding lost off the goalpost. Gomez puts it back. And Smith was felled. The referee said it wasn't late. Running repairs from Rory Underwood. Again, straightening the play up. Even if there's a chip over the top, bit of a trip there. But uh, Australia certainly on the ball. Simon, look, a very aggressive player. Never gives up. James Grant a little stiff there. Knocked back by Linehan to Shelford. Gee, his body height has been quite telling this afternoon as he's driven in to the Rucks and Malls in possession. But Australia gets the scrum feed. The more was stable. Australia, the attacking side. Good defence by Simon Poitivan. Well, the Australians have been shut out of the game. Let's see if they can do something. Smith tries to beat his opposite number. He can't. Miller's first there with Tyneman and Poitivan. Good ball here for the Australians. Cook and Williams. He won't get past Underwood. Now it's Far Jones. One-handed, a frawley. He's there. Great strength from the Australians in turn. Williams, Far Jones and Nick Damien Frawley. Well, Damien would be very happy about that. It really shows him. It really pushes himself to get there, to back up. Some good play here. Williams really kept the ball alive. Good step, but... Underwood's fast enough to get to him, but he still kept the ball in field. Very intelligent play. Fought his way back, set it up, and Far Jones here. Good captain's game. Right when your captain wants to get you back in the game, and with tremendous strength in the Sydney University second row. Well, what a match. 28 points all. This kick to put Australia back in the lead. Brian Smith does it again. The goal-kicking skills this afternoon have been nothing short of remarkable. I think the scoreboard attendance will probably be as tight as the players this afternoon. They seem to be, uh, have to work pretty hard. Smith, four conversions, one penalty and Good one Good pass by Far Jones there. Ball comes across. This is, as we said, he straightens up. Heaps of world players there, but no one's willing to take him around the legs and put him out of the game or into the touchline. Fights his way back, 
Farr Jones, good step. Again, the captain straightens the play up. Great backing up. Simon Poitman uh, back in general play. Setting up that ruck. He's lost it. This is Paxton. So we're midway, 22 and halfway. Fitness will certainly play a part in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Which side will finish the stronger? And good spoiling there from Fabio Gomez on the Australian captain. You can see the difference in confidence here. Early on, the, the, the two Argentinians, when the pack was going backwards, really lacked confidence and were throwing the ball all over the place. But now, pack going forward, they're really starting to see their skills. Schuster follows, that one going straight up. Lambert took it brilliantly. Shelford. The world on the rampage again. Hickory couldn't pick up. Four tries each. Australia by two. 18 minutes elapsed in the second half. 30 to 28. And another big kick from Andrew Leeds. Not finding touch. Williams the tackler. Miller's there. Doesn't that tell a story? Miller and Shelford at every at every bit of loose play, the both of them there. They'll be sick of the sight of each other by the end of this game. Almost to the three-quarter point in the game. This is dangerous. Cook, away from Shelford, straightening up well and stepping nicely. <whistles> Wrapped up though by Lenahan, Australia with the scrum feed going forward. World really putting pressure on the Australian line out there. A bit of a disrupted ball. Far Jones had to throw it wide, but the backs weren't ready for it. Again, Smith just chipping inside the backs, but out on the full. Gomez telling the touch judge exactly where it was kicked from. Jean-Pierre Garraway from the holy city of Lourdes. And that's Donald Linehan from Cork. Lambert at the back to Shelford. Cleared by Paxton and Porter. Would you believe Underwood and Gomez tripped over each other? Gomez uh, feeling his ankle. There could be a replacement. Alan Crowley is the reserve halfback. Picked up by Miller. Supported by Frawley. Tommy Lawton. Smith. Cook. Cut out. Still going. Grant! James Grant! Arthur! Try! Ian Williams gets his second. Good driving play by the Australian team here as they took the ball forward, committed the opposition, and some very good looping here. James Grant, really quite a fast player, really puts puts it in here, draws the opposition. Athura pins his ears back. What a great tackle by Rory Underwood. But Williams there, hungry for another try. Well laid back, great try. Brian Smith hasn't missed a kick so far. This is certainly his most difficult one. Right on the touchline. Six points the difference. Coming back. Wacko. Eight 
one-point cushion now for the Australians. Five tries to four. Here we've gone here, James Grant. Just the out, tr tr tremendous outside centre, really puts the pace on. A thorough, very intelligent, he really goes for it. But when caught, lays it back perfectly. And over goes Williams. Steve Cutler goes high. Tommy Lawton again. Australia losing ahead. So the world after snatching the lead. They trailed 21-19 at half time. And a Porter field goal put them in front. But the Australians have raised another effort. 36 to 28. Porter cut out to Keenan. Underwood's in. Players showing signs of fatigue now, which is not surprising. Car Jones getting away from Gomez. Now it's Smith. Overlap here. Leads with Williams outside. Chase for Williams. Keenan in front. Tantalizing bounce. He's carried it over the goal line. And it's going to be a five-metre scrum. Well, perfect example there. Your, your kicks are only as good as your chases. And Williams really put the pace on and really put pressure on Keenan there. Tried a few tricks to get out of it, but uh, I think Williams has had played enough tests now not to fall for them. Australia in another strong attacking position. standing quite flat and Williams on the short side watch Steve Tyman here Australia edging forward Bar Jones in close caught by Shelford they were waiting point of him. now it's Miller the world holding on Mr. Norling standing in goal, having a bird's eye view. The world trying to pilfer from the Australians. Where is it? Porter behind his goal line. Here they go. This one started behind their goal line to Underwood. Away from Leeds and Gomez. Inside is Keenan. Back it goes to Underwood. And Leeds in the last line. Tremendous play from the world. Incredibly adventurous there. Here they are, the world really under pressure. And thought, well, let's just go for it. And here we are, heaps of people backing up. Gomez out to Underwood. Keeps the ball alive again. And as he props, he props and looks for support. Very intelligent play there. But just, just too many Australians there in the touch. 24 metres out from the Australian goal line. The world stalking for another try, but Frawley won it at the front. And that's a very good kick from Brian Smith, the Australian 5'8". The young man has had an outstanding game this afternoon. He was one of the finds of Australia's tour of New Zealand, the Bledisloe Cup tour in 1986. Jeff Miller, a tireless performer. The Australian back row has been very impressive this afternoon. Lenahan setting the ball up. Here goes Hicka Reed rolling. Over halfway, Gary Wetton. Porter. Looking for the touchline, he got the curve. This man's got the ball on the end of the string. He certainly has. Here is Australian back standing right up on him. I think he was hoping Underwood would be, get a bit of a running start on that, but he uh, but certainly made sure that just dribbled into the touch. Puts the world in a very strong position here. Australia leading by eight points, 36 to 28, 14 minutes to go. Vital line-out ball. Bar Jones went without it. Lawton's there, carried over by the Australians. 
Not in touch, this is Underwood. They'll attack from here, Porter. Field goal! Out to the right, Australian standing around looking. Arthur. Oh! He forced it down, I thought it went without it. Defensive Australia on that kick was very, very good. They got back and were able to, uh, to stop the world side from attacking. Another great 22 from there. Quick throw in by the world. This is Schuster. Oh, clever dummy. Ankle tap from behind by Arthura. And I think it was Nick Farr Jones who took the drop out. And he's gained a big slice of territory for the Australians. Very important here. Nick Farr Jones is going to rally his team together. He's a true captain. He's doing extremely well. Got him back in the game. Smith. Cut out now for Grant and Williams. Williams and Tommy Mitchell. Well, the Australians really starting to get the momentum rolling. 12 minutes to go. Mitchell covering from the other wing. Well, it's a territory game now for Australia. They've really got to try and put themselves down in here, exert the pressure and hope that, that there'll be a slight mistake made by the world side. Tom Mitchell seems to have a problem here. Yes, well, there could be a replacement, and it may well be Cho Yong Duk. We'll just have to wait and see. Looks as though Mitchell's leaving the field. He's been a crowd pleaser just as he was in the World Cup. And Peter Griggs going on. And what a grand campaigner for Australia, Peter Griggs. The former Townsville Terrier, now with brothers in Brisbane, and played his first test against the All Blacks in 1980. Twelve minutes remaining. Still anyone's game. Ian Paxton. Jumping second from the back. Paxton got it. Left foot field goal by Smith. Ho -ho! He can do no wrong. And that may well put the match out of touch for the World 15. How did you like that, Bob Dwyer and the Australian reserves? Well, people were pretty concerned when Michael Leiter couldn't make the side. <laughs> but I tell you, he's going to have trouble getting back in the side. He, Smith's played extremely well. Every time the ball's touched his foot, he's got points. Brian Smith with a personal tally of 19 points and a field goal from either foot. Great take there by Cutler. Here it comes for Far Jones. Australia spreading it wide. Leeds was barreled. Peter Gook there, number 17. Cleared by Smith to Grant. Arthur is outside. Well, he seemed to uh, run into his teammate that time. Arthur throwing the ball away. 10 metre line, world territory. Steve Tymans down. Behind halfway. 38 points to 28. Well, you can see the pride coming out of the Australian jersey right now. They've, they've really fought their way back into this game and they've taken enormous pride that they are playing for Australia. And the world side's thrown everything at them from behind their own touchline, but they're really starting to move the ball well, a bit more confidence and starting to enjoy it. Great tackle by Peter Grigg. Again, Smith on the ball again, spinning it wide. Here we are, a bit of a change here, but again, Hugo Porter. Probably playing his last big international game, he's everywhere. So Steve Tyneman is leaving the field. And David Carter, the New South Wales country captain from Burindi. Coming on uh, in an international match for the first time in Australian colours. Big moment for him. And a grand effort by the number eight for Australia team, Steve Tyneman. The curtain raiser here today, New South Wales clubs under 21, defeated country under 21, 47-0. And a special cheerio to the England tourists who are up in Mackay, the heart of sugarcane territory in North Queensland. They've arrived for their tour of Australia.
Asura threading his way through picked up by Shelford yes and also watching this telecast this afternoon is that great Ramwick stalwart and former Wallaby back rower Jeff Sale from St Vincent's Hospital he's just had a hip replacement operation and Jeff uh, trust you're enjoying the action and a speedy recovery to you Jeff I'd love to be here Parjone stands Carter Carter to Miller Frawley supports desperate defence by Underwood Yes, all robes lead to Mackay on Tuesday when England opens its tour against Queensland country, which will be strengthened by several Queensland Wallabies. Lovely stepping from Porter to Hickory. On the boil. Cutler Pilford to Far Jones. Cook. Grant. Arthur is outside. He took his eye off it. Nine minutes remaining. Australian pack starting to really starting to put put it in there. They've got right in the last 10 minutes of the game. The game where Australia really has to put that pressure on, keep it going, get a few more tries. Another flip pass by Gomez. Keenan to Wyatt to Underwood. Hasn't had a real opportunity. Williams from behind. Wyatt to Arthur. Counter attack. He's in trouble. Well taken. Lambert underneath. Concerned here for the World 15 and no doubt the England cap as Rory Underwood is down, feeling his left knee. And this certainly would be a disaster for them on the eve of their Australian tour. Let's hope it's not too serious. Well, here they go. The ball's moved across Gomez, passed behind the back. The world side bursts onto the ball. Man on man, and here goes, here goes Underwood. Here goes Williams after him, put the two fastest men in rugby today really putting the power in. Williams doesn't give up, lunges, but still the ball's kept alive. And Athura from the opposite wing, tremendous work to get there and cover up. Heaps of gold jumpers around. So it looks as though Rory Underwood may not be able to continue. And Alan Crowley looks as though he'll be taking the field. really was a devastating burst from Underwood. Well, got away I from uh, Williams initially. I hope Underwood's okay because he's got a uh, pretty important tour ahead of him and uh, he'd be one of the great highlights of the new side. So Alan Crowley on for the World 15. Shelford. Paddled back by Paxton. Well, it really has been a fantastic occasion here at Concord. The two sides have really delighted the crowd this afternoon. We've seen nine tries scored. 67 points in total. And for a while there, it looked as though the World 15, Gary Pearce, was going to spoil the party. Well, the New Zealanders took over for a while there, and they really drove it up the middle, and Australia stood back and watched. As you can see here, they're going back to that, 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 that faithful style now as they want to drive over the top. Steve McDowell. Hickory lends support with Donald Lenahan. The world have it. Hickory again, running into point of it, just short of the 22. The world can still figure in the finish here. Schuster, barreled. Great tackle by Michael Cook. Hickory stands. This is Crowley. Gomez taken. And the tackle looked to be a little too high. Above the shoulders. Gomez probing around Arthura. Peter Grigg almost there. Simon Poitavan saving for Australia. McDowell the tackler. Badly twisted ankle for Rory Underwood. Gomez like a rabbit to Porter. 
Oh, the pass was knocked down by Cook. This is James Grant. Crowley back. And straightening. Crowley for the line. Look at the men outside. Schuster. Kiernan. Yes! Michael Kiernan. The former Irish 200-metre sprint champion has scored his second try. Again, as we saw Shelford in the first half, the ball went loose. Porter tries a real little dip pass around the corner, just didn't get to it. Australia on the attack, but here the best way to get to get back into the game is to run straight. And Crowley, that's what he does. He takes the ball straight up the field. The players loop around, and Keenan just too much pace for Williams. Yes, Crowley showing uh, his uh, intuitive seven skills there as he saw the gaps appearing in midfield. Member of the crack New Zealand seven aside team. So, if Porter can steer this one through, the world could still win it with a converted try. Well, it's not over, especially the way we've seen this world side right from their own, inside their own in goal. But we certainly be trying. Well, that really is a pretty critical miss, because it leaves the Australians with a seven-point cushion. And Tommy Mitchell with Seraph and Dengra. And for the England tourists, the word, the inside word is that Underwood's ankle is not serious. Andrew Leeds, Far Jones supporting on the left, linking up with Arthura. There's that little chip of his. Lambert underneath, gets the mark. Five minutes to go. The world trailing by seven. 71 points scored in the match so far. Peter Grigg couldn't hold on. Jeff Miller. Far Jones. Frawley. Big Damien Frawley straightening up. He's had a whale of a game. Ruck ball. And offside play by the world. Frustration that time against Steve McDowell. And uh, correction, it was Gary Lambert. Well, I think it really was frustration. Gary had taken the mark and they passed it lost the ball and really frustration came in from the wrong side. The Griggy was pretty keen there to get into it. I think he wants to make a bit of an impression for the selectors. Well, the crowd are booing. They wanted Australia to take a tap and run. They lead by seven because if Smith gets this one, the match is safely in Australia's keeping. This would put Australia back to a 10 point margin with about three minutes remaining. What we've seen this afternoon is that is Nick Farr Jones in his first captaincy position really pulled this team together. Smith hasn't missed a goal all day. A point scoring spree from him. His third penalty goal, he's kicked two pots and also five conversions. It's been a very, uh, as I said before, Nick Farr Jones tremendous really come out of out, out of a very the doldrums of the Australian team was in and lifted his team right out it's been a tremendous captaincy performance Damien Frawley after hurting his neck on that big drive upfield takes his spot back probably to receive this ball Cutler losing the ball back this is Miller caught by the collar shelf with the tackler Brian Smith about to handle. He has 22 points for the game. Leeds coming in in midfield, not handling. The world counters through Lambert and Shelford. Setting the ball up expertly again. McDowell to Keenan. Grant the tackler. Inside the Australian 22. Lambert. Greek. Cleared by Hickory. Gomez from Argentina. Ian Paxton from Scotland for Steve McDowell. Far Jones the tackler. Hicker Reed's in there. Two minutes to go. The world desperate for a try. Hugo Porter. 
the best high jump you'll ever see on a rugby field. Another injured player. They're strewn everywhere at the moment. Well, we've got the Argentinian circus in town here. We've got passes between the legs, round the back. And now Porter is, is, isn't one to miss out. He decides for the quickest way is straight over the top of this, over this ruck. Nick Far Jones says, wait a minute. Oh, no. <laughs> it wasn't quite a Fosbury flop. Unfortunately, he had some quite, quite uh, pacey men outside him. But uh, the world's really, they're not giving up. These players have got a lot of pride about playing, playing here today. So some solace for Rory Underwood and a can of refreshment and some ice applied to that injured ankle. Conditions quite dark here at Concord now. 74 points scored, 10 tries, two minutes to go. The world looking for another one here. Schuster to Greg, and he's going to do it. Well done, Peter Grigg. The crowd very pleased about that. Well, I was talking to Griggy before the match, and I think he was pretty keen to get on. And uh, not only is the Australian players and goal been judged today, but uh, also the other guys. Different angle, different pace. Look at that, straight through the gap. Tremendous example there of how back should run onto a ball. One minute to go. So the world needing a, almost a miracle now. Four points the difference. Less than a minute remaining. Well, there's certainly enough players on this world side to be able to take a ball and get it out the other end for six points. And uh, there's skill right across the field. So Australia have to be pretty careful here whether they kick it to. The world can still win it with a converted try. Just a straight try would draw the game. 30 seconds remaining. One last hurrah for the world. Wayne Shelford. Ball was lost back. Schuster. Wyatt went without it. This is dangerous. Greg. He's caught on his goal line. Through two Australian tackles. And Australia with the last scrum feed, and that surely will be it. We may not even see this scrum pack down. Five metres out, Far Jones with Carter, Lawton, Poiterman. No try. Hooter is gone. The match is all over. Australia has downed the world by 42 to 38 in this bicentennial international here at Concord Oval. A standing ovation from the crowd. A wonderful exhibition. Ten tries scored in the game.